The subject is the mandate to forgive. The mandate to forgive. The authoritative command to give. The mandate to forgive. God commands all of us to forgive. And that means all of us. Doesn't matter about what position we hold in the church or what position we hold in the community. Doesn't matter about our position in terms of our careers or our socioeconomic level. God commands all of us to forgive. God commands us because it is his nature to forgive. Therefore, as his children, we have become an extension of him in the world. It is only natural that we would forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiveness is germane to the life of a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Some might suggest that it is natural not to forgive, but I submit to you that it is natural to forgive if you live in the Lord Jesus Christ. It should not be a difficulty. It should not be a difficulty for you to forgive if you're in the Lord Jesus Christ because the Bible tells us that he will give us the strength that we can carry out his will and his way in the world. We reflect the presence of God in us when we can humble ourselves enough to say, yes, I forgive you or to say, will you please forgive me? Very simple words, but so hard for some people to say. Some people would rather live in separateness. They would rather live in conflict and resentment than to just simply forgive. Then let it go. Just be free from it so you can live your life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you and I both know that forgiveness is essential to our living the Christ life. For believers in the Lord Jesus Christ cannot afford to go around holding grudges in our hearts. And sometimes we do that, don't we? Sometimes we do go around holding grudges in our hearts, resenting people, sometimes hating people. Sometimes holding jealousies toward others, envy toward others. But my friends, as we gather today, we are reminded that God commands all of us to forgive. And this is what he requires. This is what we must do. And we're going to live in light of God's blessings in our lives. Now, what is the definition of the word forgiveness? Forgiveness is renouncing resentment or anger against another person. It is renouncing resentment or anger against another person. Forgiveness is a pardon. We all have heard about how the President of the United States or the Governor of a state can issue a pardon. That does not mean the person is innocent. It means that they are forgiven by society. Therefore, they can continue to live life as they lived their lives before. Forgiveness is excusing a fault. Is excusing a fault. Forgiveness is excusing an offense. Forgiveness is simply setting a person free from the repercussions of a wrong. It is letting a person off the hook. It is allowing a person to be free again, but also it is allowing yourself to be free because when you forgive another person, you also free up yourself. Now, if there is anybody under the sound of my voice who just is determined to hold on to your grudge, to hold on to your resentment, you had better look out. Amen. Because you will have some health problems because of it. High blood pressure, heart problems, all the other things that can come from holding a grudge. Why not want to live a healthy life by simply letting a grudge go and letting yourself live in the joy and the peace of Almighty God. Now I would be the first to say that forgiving sometimes can be extremely difficult. Can be extremely difficult. It can really can. It's hard to forgive people. It's hard to forgive people. 
Amen. And along the way in this flesh, it will be hard to forgive people. Amen. Especially people who keep on stepping on your toes. Amen. Over and over again, keep on doing what they're doing. Sometimes it's hard to forgive. But you know what? Whether or not we forgive a person is not determined by that person. It is determined by God and the command that God makes upon our lives. We are to forgive, not according to our circumstances, but according to the command of Almighty God. Now, many of us today are not willing to forgive. Sometimes it seems that some of us enjoy holding grudges. Some of us enjoy living a life holding something against somebody else. But I want you to know that God knows all about it. God knows the frustration that we bear. God knows the hurt and pain that we carry in our hearts. So God desires that we would be forgiving, that we would forgive indeed. Now a lot of people have said that forgiveness is equal to forgetting. Have you heard that? That forgiveness is equal to forgetting. Now, uh, you can't always forget what a person did to you. Amen. Say if a person calls you uh, to break your leg and you can't walk right any longer. Every time you get up and start limping, you're going to think about how you got to limping. You understand what I'm saying? Say if a person accidentally caused you to have a scar on your face. Every time you go to the mirror, you're going to look at that scar and you're going to remember where it came from. See, the, the, the fact of forgiveness has to do with whether or not we will hold grudges against somebody else. Let me put it another way. It has to do with whether or not we will help a person if they really need help or will we not help them because of what they did for us. So ultimately, true forgiveness has to do with whether or not we are free enough in ourselves to let another person be free that our relationship with each other or that your relationship with that person can be a relationship of help and encouragement, a relationship that will help each one to live his or her life to the fullest, to the glory of Almighty God. Many of us today are not willing to forgive. Somebody listen to me right now, you're holding a grudge. Somebody listen to me right now is not willing to forgive. We've got to learn how to forgive. We must learn to forgive in our family circles. In many of our families, there are those who hold grudges against one another. Can you imagine people with the same blood flowing through their bodies? holding grudges against one another? Can you imagine people who came from the same mother holding grudges against one another? Can you imagine a husband and wife who've been married for years holding a grudge against one another? We have unforgiveness in our families. Am I right about it? And there are those who need to be free, who need to be free in the Lord Jesus Christ so that they can be free to love one another in the family. Amen, somebody. There are some children who left home and haven't been back yet because they can't get over something happened 30 years ago. Amen. There are some sisters and brothers not speaking to one another because of something happened 10 or 15 years ago. We need to let it go. Am I right about it? We need to let it go so God can work in our lives. So God can, of course, Bless us as we bless other people. So many people are not willing to forgive, even in our family circles. And God is saying to us this morning, you need to forgive. People are only not willing to forgive in the family circle, but many people are not willing to forgive within the life of the church. Within the life of the church, there are those who are not willing to forgive. One little thing can happen, and some people hold it against the church for the rest of their lives. Some folk are holding against the church so much that they're leaving go to another church. Now, if you can't forgive over here, when you go to another church where you will be offended at some point, are you going to leave and go to another church and to another church and to another church? Will the time ever come when you will begin to understand that there are no perfect people? Nobody's going to always treat you right. You got to learn how to forgive and let it go so God can better work in your life every day. Am I right about it? Some, some church folk won't sit in the same aisle together. Won't sit in the same section together. Won't sing on the same choir together. Won't serve in the same ministry together because of grudges in their hearts. Am I talking to anybody? 
If I'm talking to you, God is talking to you. And God is saying, let it go so you can be free to worship him and praise him in your life. Some folk are glued to their pew on Sunday morning and can't worship God because grudges are holding them down. Amen, somebody. They can't be free to worship God because they're holding resentment in their hearts. Yes. And my friends in the life of the church, we ought to be able to shake hands with a clean heart yes. and with a clear conscience.